show. Uh, one of the things that uh, kind of sparked me wanting to ask you to do this was around Christmas time, I had had a couple friends reach out to me being like, bro, did you know that the that all of Christmas is based on the magic mushroom? Did you know that the Catholic Church is like completely founded? I guess what was going on was, um, you know, it was getting close to Christmas time. Joe Rogan was doing what Joe Rogan does. And whenever he brings that up, he drops your name. Right? And I, I oh, think no. that's pretty funny. Yeah. Well, Anytime that's up, funny because stuff. I've come out against my own early work on that stuff for over a decade now. And of course, I went on Rogan's show, JRE episode number 119 in July of <clears throat> 2011, and was exposing that the whole mushroom thing uh, was MK Ultra. Gordon Wasson, who popularized the magic mushrooms, headed MK Ultra Subproject 58. Uh, I have since done a whole lot of investigation that people can find in the articles on my website. Gordon Wasson, the man, the legend, the myth, infusions, what's in a name, uh, spies in academic clothing, those are all up on my website going into the whole history of that. But, you know, the issue is that these people don't understand, and I didn't at the time either, that Christianity is based on logos or truth as God, and Christ is logos incarnate. And uh, here to teach us how to live in truth and to follow a righteous example of life, you know, and when you read the New Testament, it explains, which I, you know, back when I wrote my books on that stuff, I would only spot read the Bible. I never just sat down and read it cover to cover. And in 2017, I did. And it just came paint became painfully obvious that, uh, you know, that the Bible was talking about truth as God. And it, and it mentions it in over 240 different ways kind of like God is truth. Truth is God. God is logos. Logos is God. Get it yet? Get it yet? Get it yet? Get it yet? Let me say it 240 different ways so you get it now, you know? And it hit me like a ton of bricks and I ditched all of my, you know, and I had already parted from the psychedelic stuff. And then I, in 2018, I ditched the Gnostic media name realizing that the Gnostics were a big fraud as well, and uh, became a Christian, you know, and it was, and I had studied every religion for decades and wrote and did shows on it. So it was pretty wild for me of all people to come full circle and end up becoming a Christian, you know? So it was uh, an unexpected turn of of events. And when I sat down in 2017 to read, you know, I started off with the New Testament and just read it all the way through as it's meant to be read instead of spot reading. Uh, I started out to debunk it. And I got to Acts before I went, oh, crap. You know? (laughs) So, or, or more like, okay, I repent. Oh, geez. You know, and and when you get that, it's all about truth. It brings on a whole other meaning and, and getting high doesn't bring you to logos. And I have people come up with ridiculous arguments all the time about, well, the drugs teach you logos and this and that. And no, it's logos means reason. Logos is where we get the word logic. Logic is the art of non-contradictory understanding or truth and so when we get that you know it all starts to come together and this is why they promote so much anti-logic moral relativist uh anti-reality quantum physics nonsense today because they don't want people to know that truth exists. They'll promote monism or monopsychism or primacy of consciousness, which is the most egoic nonsense ever. It's that I am God. The world is a reflection of me. You, Shane, don't have your own agency. 
you're just a reflection of me. There's only one philosophy, me, you know, and when you find your true inner self, all you're going to find is me. And it's not you. You don't have your own agency. It's just me. And you see all of the, the leftists, the pseudo spiritualists, the, uh, the psychedelic people all promoting this angle of stuff. And when you get right down to it, like if you look in the DSM, people who deny reality are schizophrenic. So when you flip it and understand that reality is real, suddenly the weight of the world comes off you. Oh, there's a war between Russia and Ukraine because I'm not being positive enough, you know, and all of this kind of nonsense. And, and But when you realize that reality is real and that you're of the world and the world is not of you, that you are created in God's image, not the God and the world are you, then suddenly you realize that people have their own agency to act and do as they will, you know, and that was what the Bible explains is that God had to give us agency or choice to be free to choose, not to be slaves, you know, to choose righteousness, you know, and, and right behavior from wrong behavior, to choose truth over lies. You know, it's like Satan is the father of all lies and, and God cannot lie. Titus 1, 2, you know, so when you get that it's all about lies versus truth, it all really starts to make sense. And, and in the U.S. here, I don't know about Canada, and they're trying to get rid of this, too. But when you go into court, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. I mean, they put it right in your face. That's the cosmic joke. And, uh, you know, so that's why they want that removed from the courtroom. It's not because it's religious. It's be really because it exposes what God is, you know, and you're swearing to truth God. So it puts things in a whole new perspective. <clears throat> it makes reality real. It means that, you know, and I did shows back in 2011 with, uh, David Harriman, who teaches at a local university here, who had spent years debunking quantum physics and showed that it was all based on uh, <clears throat> false Kantian uh, philosophical principles. And uh, so, you know, all of a sudden you realize that the map is not the territory. The quantum physics stuff is a bunch of bull to get you to believe that, oh, well, there's 12 realities and you can't know the truth and why even ask and if there is no truth there is no right and wrong so anything goes so we're just going to promote degeneracy and as you know you know all of this stuff that they promote ends in destroying your own family you know whereas the bible says be fruitful and multiply you know so uh, promoting the LGBT QWERTY agenda. I say QWERTY because they're always adding letters, so that just encompasses the whole keyboard. Um, but all of that ends in destroying your own family, your own family tree. So all of your ancestors were successful up until you. And do you drop the ball and fail and kill off your family tree for eternity? Or do you carry it on? You know, and then there's all of the the Burning Man and psychedelics and all of this stuff. And that's all to get you caught up into partying and extended adolescence, arrested development. So that by the time you figure out what's going on, it's too late to settle down to have a family. You know, and then what do they do? They make fun of families now and call them racists and bigots and all of this stuff, you know, it used to be punk rock was rebellious. Now having a family is the rebellion. <laughs> I like how they blame that on education as well. They're trying like, in a way, they're not wrong, you know, but it's the, the education that they've kind of fed us or the programming within the education that they fed us that has caused this. But they'll, they'll use that as like, you know, if you look at the educated people, they're having less children, right? Well... <clears throat> 
And that's interesting. What they've done is they've gotten people, especially women these days, to chase careers and to make that the thing to do rather than being the backbone of the society, which is the family. So you get people out of the home and you put them in the workplace chasing after a career and, and then they think they don't have the time to have a family and they don't. And so guess what? That family tree is in it. But all of these things, you know, they don't, it's not a, a, a single prong att attack. It's multi prong. It's the drugs, the partying, the rock music, the career chasing, abortions, all of this stuff. And when you go through the history of it all, you know, as you know, through my work, it all ties down, ties back to people like Aldous Huxley, the Fabian Society, and uh, Westcott and Hort and Blavatsky and all of these people, they were all in cahoots together. And this was their agenda. You know, they even uh, rewrote and planted fake texts. It turns out, you know, the Dead Sea Scrolls were planted. One of the first acts the CIA did in 1947, a few days after their inception, was to hold a conference in Seelisburg, Switzerland, to fake the Dead Sea Scrolls based on the Cairo Geniza Scrolls. And I've been exposing this, or Steve has been exposing it with me, more like, uh, on my show and been going through all of the, the research and making the connections so that people can begin to understand how this whole thing was done. And then you have like, Tischendorf and the uh, Codex Sinaiticus and and these texts that were also inserted to change Christ from Logos incarnate into a peace and love communist Jesus, you know, and Jesus wasn't the Jesus that we know of. He was the Jesus at Qumran in the, in where the, the, the scrolls were found, the teacher of righteousness, who is this total uh psycho commie figure who didn't believe in any freedom at all you know and and when you get the bible it's where our freedoms come from in a way i think the bible has kind of been used as a tool to pull all of this off as well especially with some of the rewrites and the yeah. you know the, the elimination of the female qualities in the bible that were you know in there back uh once upon a time right and i think that all of you know, as much as that's kind of been the framework that could maintain it, it also has things within it that has, have skewed people even within the followers of that material to veer off of that, that path. Well, I think there's been an effort to try to paganize and Gnosticize the teachings. You know, there is a reason why the, the church founding fathers and whatnot laid things out the way they did. If you look, if you do some research, you can spend 10 minutes researching this. Women leaders go to war more often than men. Women think with emotion, men think more with logic. And, and it's not a bad thing. Women need to think with emotion because they're the child bearers. Men need to think more with logic to head and protect the family. So, you know, you put the two together and you have a successful unity, which they don't want. But this is why, you know, the Bible is against women church leaders and whatnot, because women cause more wars. And they'll say, oh, it's all, you know, testosterone driven, male dominated patriarchy. Well, it's not true, you know, and it. A few years ago, I did some research on this, and I don't remember the exact numbers, but, you know, it, it came out to something like women leaders had caused two-thirds more wars than men, and it was pretty easy to verify this stuff. So, you know, it is what it is, but <clears throat> when, you, when you put a woman in, in charge of the house and you in charge of the family and, and directing it, it becomes a powerful force. You know, and nationalism, a nation is the largest extension of family. So, of course, they want to attack family. They want to attack nationalism and they call nationalism anything that's national. They call fascism. And the reason they do this is because Hitler called himself a nationalist. But what they omit is that if you do real research on Hitler instead of Snopes in your 
second, third hand tertiary sources in the encyclopedia, you'll quickly discover that that Hitler was a hardliner leftist socialist. He wasn't a far right winger at all. He was a far left winger. And, uh, you know, and all of the stuff that they're doing today is not only Marxist socialist, but it's based on Herbert Marcuse. And people can and can study uh, Marcuse and find out, you know, this is exactly what they did with the BLM. This is, you know, what they're doing right now. Anything that conservatives and Christians say is automatically wrong, and anything the left says is automatically right. That's all literally based directly out of Marcuse. And you don't want a dialogue. You want to just attack it outright because in Marcuse's theory, only Marcuse is right, and only a Marcuse is the one to have allowed to have an opinion. Of course, right? We got to uh, control who gets to speak uh, because we don't we don't want to actually sort out problems. We just we just want to uh, make them a little bit worse. Right. Well, you know, when you get in behind these guys and, you know, people can go on my website and click on the brain DB link at the top of the page and start digging through the database there. And you'll see that Herbert Marcuse and the Fabians and Aldous Huxley, who was the chief architect of MK Ultra, and all of these guys, they're all working together. And they're, you know, there's a reason why they're called Fabian Socialists. And there's a reason why their logo up until a few years ago was a wolf in sheep's clothing. You know, but they were, it's all about promoting communism, Marxism uh, from any direction possible and not having an honest discussion about it. Uh, I'm just going to read a quote here because so many people think that, um, that uh, socialism and communism are the final utopia because that's how it's sold. But when you actually read it and understand it, it's it's really about tyranny. But Steve Jones, who's a, a common uh, guest on my show, says, socialism is not the final evolutionary stage of society. It is the end stage when a society has lost its fundamental principles and now wants to exi exist just for the sake of existing. The rulers need a cover story to retain their power. It's at this stage they try to rule through fear and threats. And that's really what it is, you know, and most people think that these elitist Marxist socialists are in it for them. They don't look at, you know, how they were all eugenicists, how they wanted to kill the, the common people off, how they wanted to promote all of this degeneracy just to destroy the family, as we already discussed. Not only the family, but just the, to rearrange or reset the way society in general works so that, you know, uh, they can maintain this level of control. And, and this is the thing, like, you are well aware of it because, I mean, all of the research you've been doing your entire life is now playing out in society, like you referenced Huxley. Um, that's kind of today's society, right? Like, the, between that and... The and, Brave uh, New World and course. Huxley's Island and all of that stuff. Yeah, you know, and George Orwell, Eric Blair, was also a Fabian socialist, and he was tutored by Huxley, and they would have debates whether it was going to be the total Ingsoc, English socialism-type control with brute force or Huxley's mental mind control type, you know, and, and clearly it's a combination of, of the two. But, you know, you I'll, I'll see, you know, I'm on this... Facebook socialist group just to see the nonsense that they post and they'll put post glorious things about Bertrand Russell and all these different socialists and I you know the other day I went in there just posting totally sarcastic I'm a big fan of uh, Bertrand Russell because of all of the eugenics he promoted to uh, kill off the the plebes and uh, you know to create this great utopia without all the stupid eater masses and all of that stuff and you know, and they posted something about, about in the same post about uh, Einstein. And I was like, you know, and it, it turns out that Bertrand Russell worked directly with Aldous Huxley. And Aldous Huxley's brother, Julian Huxley, worked directly with Einstein at Princeton. And they were both eugenics. And, 
and uh, or eugenesis and Julian Huxley rewrote Darwin's theory to, uh, you know, and Thomas Henry Huxley was Darwin's propaganda manager. The two families are intermarried, but rewrote it to promote all of this social Darwinism stuff so that they can have reason to kill off the stupid masses. You know, what they saw after World War I and World War II with the two socialist Marxist factions, or technically three, you had the Marxist Soviet Russians, you had the National Socialist Germans, and the International Socialists or the, the uh, fascists, the Italians. And, you know, they massacred between those three groups uh, between 148 and 202 million people. You know, so <clears throat> essentially exterminating the society. What you had was the women in the factories producing the armaments and the men in the ditches killing each other, right? So, but people don't realize that this is the goal of, of socialism and Marxism to create this end utopia, but they think that the, uh, the, the goal is this utopia that they all speak about and how after this tyrannical government forces us into it after a time, will become this utopia and the government will just disappear. Of course, that's absurd. The government's never gonna give up its power. But uh, you have to have this false understanding, believing these elite people at face value. And what they saw after they toured Europe and the carnage that they had caused with their belief systems, they needed to come up with a new, method to promote all of this. They came up with soft kill methods. Rather than putting people in ditches to kill each other off, they realized that they could get you to kill yourself off and kill off your own family tree. So we're going to promote degeneracy, rock music, LGBT QWERTY, anti-family rhetoric, get women out of the home, feminism, MGTOW, all of that stuff, uh, you know, any form of, of degeneracy to wipe out the family and they never have to fire a shot really. But most people don't see this agenda and how the U S packaged it was the Soviet union was so rigid. We're going to prove to them how free we are and anything goes. So, you know, but when you look at this CIA agenda and there's, documentaries where these CIA guys openly admit, oh, well, you're just stupid. You don't see how we were promoting the ultimate freedom. Well, the ultimate freedom through degeneracy and iniquity leads eventually to our own demise. You get a, a weak society that's so caught up in their degeneracy and their sexual behavior. And, you know, today, most kids' entire philosophical view orbits around their genitals. And that's as far as they can see. Their freedom is, you know, where they put their sexual parts. It's not, it has nothing to do with true freedom, freedom of speech, the freedom for the right to bear arms, to keep tyranny at bay, all of this stuff. It's about, you know, my genitals and nothing more. So, and, and like I said, you know, how do you get someone to wipe out their own family tree? And I have a this Jaffe memo in the database under Planned Parenthood from 1969, where they openly discuss that they're going to promote homosexuality as a form of eugenics. And then about seven, eight years ago, all of a sudden in all the magazine stands, newspapers, and every TV show, they've got a gay character. It, you know, and people think that this was just organic. It's not. It's all social engineering. They want you to be confused over your sexuality. You know, and another thing that promotes this behavior is uh, veganism. You know, vegan women can enter menopause as early as age 21. So they're out. And then, uh, you know, testosterone is made out of cholesterol. So guess what? Your liver can only produce about 10% of what your body needs. So they promote all of this vegan rhetoric and the fake news media and whatnot. And all of this is eventually going to lead to 
you know, you needing to take testosterone pills and Viagra and all of this stuff. No, all you have to do is quit being a vegan and start eating more eggs, butter, ribeye steaks and whatnot. And, and you know, any of that stuff will, you know, 90% chance will disappear in a couple few months. But, you know, they have everybody on these uh, Stanton drugs, lowering the cholesterol. Well, your brain is made out of 77% cholesterol. Your reproductive system is made out of cholesterol. So why would they be promoting that? So the older you are, the higher your cholesterol level should be. Like Sally Fallon and the Weston A. Price Foundation put it like this. The closer to 100 you are, the closer to 1,000 your cholesterol level should be. And we're talking about HDL cholesterol. The bad cholesterol comes mostly from grains. And they have everybody believing for 85 years that it's from meat, butter, and eggs. But so if you're 40, your cholesterol level should be around 400. And what they've got is all of these elderly people, they're keeping them at around 175. And there's people can look this up. There's a number of studies out there that show low cholesterol and statin drugs lead to Alzheimer's. So why do we have this boom in Alzheimer's and the elderly, the people that should have the most knowledge and wisdom in our culture, they're losing their minds because they're believing the doctors that have been, you know, misled on this whole uh, low fat, low cholesterol thing. You know, if you want to get rid of most of your health problems, quit eating grains and sugar and corn syrup. So you can see these agendas from multiple different directions and how they play out, you know, but if you're, you know, oh, oh, another thing I was going to say is like uh, dementia, they're calling that now type three diabetes. It's from eating too much sugar and crap, you know, so people forget they lose their mind. So how do you rectify this? Well, go out and eat a bunch of steaks, butter, eggs, bacon, all the stuff that's good for you. And stop thinking that you're evolving spiritually because you're a vegan. You know, all of that, all that is, is your brain hallucinating from being starved of proper nutrition, you know, and then it'll correct itself. Then you'll find that you can get it up again. And you can find, you you know, women can reverse the early onset of menopause, all this stuff that, that goes on. And, uh, you know, correct this, but they're being bombarded by media and people need to realize that the media is lying to them. They're selling these agendas and it takes a lot to understand how all of these different, you know, agendas connect. It's not just the one thing. It's not just the drugs. It's not just the Stanton drugs. It's not just feminism or MGTOW or LGBT QWERTY. It's all of this stuff together, the psychedelics, the rock music, you know, it's to get you to party and waste your life and not build a future. You know, it's the destruction of society through iniquity. I got into a conversation on Facebook, I don't know, three, four months ago. These women were arguing for abortion because well, not just any man I sleep with deserves to be a father of my children. Okay, so why don't you keep your legs closed? What What are you talking about? What do you? Why do you think my legs were open? What about rape? Well, you know, abortions due to rape are less than one percent of all abortions. That means the other ninety nine percent are from your lack of bad judgment. You know, yeah, and uh, yeah, like I, I. Oh, one other point, real quick, and then I'll let you have it. So, since the 1970s, the largest genocide in all history has been committed by women against their own children. Women themselves have murdered. So we talked a bit ago about 148 to 202 million people massacred by the Marxists. Women have massacred over 1.6 billion children, their own children. 
rather than protecting and nurturing their children, they've become the largest mass murderers in all history. And that's got to have an effect on the collective psyche. Um, and a lot of what this, you know, this has been a, a long-term agenda to steer society into this way. And there are a lot of like, you know, at the end of the day, individuals caught up in this, this bullshit who don't, who are following these things, you know, from the goodness of their own hearts, so to speak, or like, you know, from a place where their morals are so perverted and, and messed well, I up. I just want they... to accept and love everybody because it's moral relativism, right? Yeah. And so a lot of people don't see how they're actually working for an agenda that takes them away from the core of what their values are supposed to be. It's like someone who says they believe someone, but their actions go completely in the opposite way. And it's, it's a really unfortunate thing because, you know, there's so much piled on top of people that it, it's almost sad to watch the average individual have to contend with all of this and try to make sense of all of it and then actually make an accurate assessment of their own place in the world, right? So as much as I, like, I agree with everything you're saying about this agenda and how it's playing out and what it's causing in people, but at the same time, I, I definitely, you know, just in case anyone's listening to this, want people to know that, like, I still have a lot of respect for every soul that's involved with this in, in terms of the public. But, you know, the problem is, is they're, they're mind controlled and they don't know exactly. it. They, they think that this behavior is freedom. Yes. And the irony, which I fell prey to, I wrote two books against Christianity, you know, and then having to eat, you know, massive plates of crow. And, uh, you know, but, you know, people used to say, oh, well, the Bible predicts all of this stuff. Well, how does it do that? Well, I go in and I read it, you know, and it's like, oh, wow. Well, if you follow logos, you can see how all of the anti-logos, anti-Christ stuff plays out. But, you know, it, if you stick with logos, you see how to correct it all. So what are the Satanists and the pedovores and the, uh, you know, the, the dark people of the world, what do they do? They take the teachings and they invert them and they do the exact opposite. So if the Bible says, don't do this, they do that or they promote that, you know? So they're going to do anti-logic, anti-natural law, uh, anti-logos, anti-Christ. And this is how they lay it all out, you know. But when you understand that logos is truth, it's how we build a high-functioning society. The only reason why a society needs so many laws is when we're not all living in logos, you know. There should only be one law. Live under logos. Live on, follow truth. And yeah, then, you know. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, you know, and it's like, when you do that, the rest of it becomes moot, right? Because everybody's already going to do the right thing because, you know, that, you know, that's the real utopia is when everybody follows truth and you don't need force. You don't need anything. You need logic, understanding, and truth to guide you, which brings in love and ethics and the rest of it. Yeah, and even uh, the agenda to kind of fuck with childhoods and pervert what childhood even means, um, you know, you don't ever get that chance to to learn properly. So from right from the beginning, um, the way that we're, we're taught about the world, the way that we're taught to feel about the world has been perverted in such a way that the root is off, the foundation is just not there. So if you think about that, when it term, you play that into the bigger part of society, this MK Ultra that we've all been under as a society has us so broken that we don't know how to think properly. We don't understand this, the processes of thinking. And one thing I know, especially with my background in psychology, is we've been taught to put emotions before thinking. We've Absolutely. been taught to value emotions above everything else. When my son was little, he used to have these, you know, little kid science projects. And one of them, you take this powder and you put it in a little jar and it turned into this nasty goo over like you know a half an hour an hour or whatever <clears throat> so whenever he would think with his emotions i would say get out the slime jar and we're going to put your emotions in here and we're going to think with the facts and understand everything and then when we're done we can let the emotions back out again 
once we understand, once we understand, then we can let the emotions out. You know, we need emotions. We need to love our children. We need to love our spouses and whatnot. But, you know, when emotions rule over us, we, you know, there is no uh, foundation in truth. And emotion leads to genocides. You know, look at, look at, the BLM and Antifa. I mean, these people are so twisted and caught up in emotion, they don't even realize that their own history of those movements are exactly what they purport to be against because they're caught up in the emotion of it. Antifa, really? Well, you're fighting against capitalists, and Hitler was a leftist, socialist, psychopath. And the capitalists fought and stopped Hitler. And you're conflating national socialism with capitalism because all of your leftist professors have spoon fed you a bunch of malarkey and you never went out and fact checked it. People don't, not only do they lack critical thinking today, which we can go into in a minute, but they don't understand the, de the difference between primary, secondary, and tertiary sources. So, and I, I posted this analogy on Facebook a few weeks ago, maybe you saw it, it was about Mozart. And these two researchers were researching the whole fraud behind Mozart and how several people wrote his music and the Nazis actually propped him up with all of this uh, fake rhetoric and whatnot. But uh, Mozart's father wrote a good chunk of the music, as did others. But in this article, they explain, and I've been explaining on my show for 12 years now, 13, going on 13 years, the difference between primary, secondary, and tertiary sources. But what's the word? Source. Right? What's the source? And so how they put it was you're on a, you're, you're looking for water and you go to a mountain and at the very top of the mountain, that's the clean, pristine water or the primary source of the water where it's in its purest form. And you go downstream a little ways and it's a little bit muddied and, you know, it's picked up stuff down the stream along the way. And, you know, and it's it's still mostly okay to drink, but it might be a little dirty. Those are your secondary sources. That's your news media. That's your encyclopedias. That's your Wikipedia and all that stuff. It's been muddied and watered down and whatnot. Then you get to your the bottom of the mountain, and it's probably pretty unhealthy water to drink at that point because it's so far removed from the source. So, you know, you drink it and it's full of mud and bacteria and, you know, you're puking your guts out and, and you get dysentery or whatever the heck. And, you know, you're, you're getting it from the Genghis River or, or somewhere and people have pooped in it since and all of this stuff, you know, and there's, you know, bodies floating down it and whatnot in their, in their, uh, you know, uh, uh, burial rituals and whatnot. I guess you can't call it a burial, funeral rites. So these bodies are floating in it and all of this stuff is in it. And it's like, you know, that's not what you want to drink. You know, and then you go to fourth hand, fifth hand citations. You know, it's like the rumor mill around the water cooler at work. This is what most people think of facts. You know, my neighbor said his dog said that other neighbor's dog said and you know, that dog's owner said this and he heard it on the media and the media said, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, really? And, you know, and but, you know, even our news media today is a far cry from investigative journalism. You know, back in my 20s, I worked for the L.A. Times and they used to have a, a large investigative journalism department. And then they fired a whole bunch of us because the Chicago Tribune bought out, and, you know, and the Times had been owned by, I forget the family, the Times had been owned by one family for over 100 years. So the Chicago Tribune comes in, fires all of the investigative journalists, fires like half of the staff, and uh, everything is just off the AP Newswire. 
in Reuters, you know, and so there was no more investigative journalism. So now it's just repeating, you know, third, fourth hand stuff on down the line. And then people take this as fact, you know, so when you hear the news media say, you know, Trump did the quid pro quo, what's the source? How come the primary source is Joe Biden on the World Economic Forum, run by Schwab, a, a former Nazi, admitting right there on camera that he did the quid pro quo and that they spun it all on Trump? Or, you know, we've been saying for years that Hillary did the whole Russian dossier thing. Of course, that's all out now. What do they do? They blow up a war with Russia to cover that all up. As well, as well as the joy and everything else going in the world, which is what we call uh, here on this right. podcast. Well, yeah, wait, what happened? To joy. You know, right. two weeks ago, half the morons, I, I live in the woods. I would see morons miles from anyone else, anything else. I'd be out in the woods and I'd see someone walking down a trail by themselves or two people. Beep, 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 beep. You know, never mind hypoxia, never mind breathing in and, and recycling your own waste. You're supposed to expel that waste and get fresh air back in. And then the sun kills through ultraviolet light, kills those bacteria. But instead, you're keeping it on your face and recycling it for two years depriving yourself of proper oxygen levels. And of course, you know, there's a, there was a study I found and I wrote an article about it and I published on Facebook. I got 30 day FB jail for posting it, but it showed that an increase in CO2 exacerbates the fear response in the brain. And what did we see for the last two years? A big fear response, right? Now all these people going around. Beep, 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 beep. Yep. Coincidence? I don't think so. You know, but there, there's all of these other health-related problems, bacterial pneumonia and all of this other stuff. Beep, 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 beep. And then people die from wearing masks, get sick from wearing masks, and they label it all as joy. And then they can perpetuate the same lie again. But, you know, people, you know, don't even understand, like, and, and Fauci, I have a video of him somewhere, of him contradicting himself 10 or 12 times about and, uh, you know, saying people shouldn't wear, oh, you know, well, it, wearing is just about showing good, proper behavior and, you know, but you shouldn't be wearing blah, blah, blah. But, you know, it was for when you're within six feet of strangers, and especially if you have it, not when you're driving down the freeway in your car alone, not when you're walking out in the wilderness where it's fresh air, green trees, sunshine recycling your own waste into your face you know it's you know people don't oh well you don't trust the science no i actually look at the science what science do you trust or do you just parrot whatever the news media says have you actually gone in and read the scientific studies what about the scientific studies that show that surgeons who don't wear have lower infection rates during open heart surgeries and every other kind of surgery than surgeons who do what about that? It was an insignificant amount, like 0.2% or something like that, but it was still less than the surgeons who wore masks. So what about all of that? You know, Aside but, from the health part of it, what about the symbolic part of it, right? Like you just well, mentioned yeah. Fauci, Fauci talking about the optics of it, and that's really all it is. And then I know, I'm sure with your research, you understand the optics of it, right? Oh, yeah. Well, and not only that, but you can't understand what people are saying when you can't see their lips. And, uh, you know, and then you ha have this boom in crime because everybody's wearing a mask. Gee, I wonder why. Hey, look, we can all go around wearing masks now and commit crimes. It's starting to sound an and, awful lot like Babylon, isn't it? It's starting, yeah. And then you have, uh, you know, uh, the uh, the whole burqa issue, which is a whole nother topic on its own preparing people for you know forced islam but you know it's people don't get 
the most basic logic. Well, the TV Fauci says you're against science. Really? I used to hang out on the beach down at Corona Del Mar, excuse the ironic name, with Dr. Kerry Mullis, who invented PCR DNA testing. He said anything over 27 cycles would give false, res uh, false causes, false results that could be interpreted in any way whatsoever. He dies in August 2019. Yeah, 2019. Four months later, they're using his test for COVID, and they're using 40 to 60 cycles. He straight up said any cycle over 27 can give interpretations of any way whatsoever. So why were all the tests 40 to 60 cycles? And he said, you know, really, you should be down around 11 cycles. You know, but if he were alive, do you think that they could have used his test the way they did? Oh, look, he's dead and he's not on. He's not out doing interviews anymore, straight out calling Fauci a fraud. Now we can roll out with this agenda because he's dead. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Per perfect timing, right? You know, he's probably rolling in his grave going, oh, my God, you know, look at all this. But you can't, you can't make this stuff up. And, oh, but you got to go with the science because my TV science – parroting whatever the TV says, that's the real science, not me actually sitting down for an afternoon and reading the scientific journals and the different discussions on this and coming to my own conclusion and understanding hypoxia and understanding that it's child abuse making kids wear in schools and understanding that the suicide rate went through the roof over the last two years. You know, especially in kids 13 to, what was it, 21 or something like that. You know, massive, massive suicide rate, like never before seen. But when you see that it's all about killing off your family and depopulation agenda, well, suddenly that makes sense. Hey, wear a dirty get bacterial pneumonia, hypoxia, all these other health problems, uh, you know, keep the kids locked up and away from their friends at school and force the suicide rate through the roof. That's all good. They're all worthless eaters, you know. Well, we've also broken the family units so bad that a lot of those kids shouldn't be at home with those parents. You know what I mean? Well, you know, yeah, but we don't want <laughs> the government and its socialist agenda. That's what Huxley and these Fabian socialists want is they – they don't think that the parents should have any right to raise children. They want the government to entirely raise the children, and that'll be much worse. You know, that's their utopia is to have a parentless society where the government does everything. And that's and not going to well turn out away. well at all. What's that? The, the training's all in place now, right? The between yeah. the social distancing wearing the staying at home whenever we fucking tell you to do so. You know, and any of the above. It's it's. You know, people have been trained to do it. It's pretty easy now for them to now pivot that into any cause, right? Like, Oh, yeah. Well, and you go back to Herbert Marcuse and you go back to Saul Alinsky, which, you know, between those two, you have a whole, you know, a large picture of their agenda. Saul Alinsky, blame your enemy for whatever you're doing. You know, I lived in Serbia from 94 to 2000 with my ex-wife, she was served. We lived with her family in Belgrade. Every day, you know, we'd be watching CNN, Sky News, BBC, whatever. And I'd sit there going, you know, why are they saying this? And I'd go outside and open the door, look out on the balcony, come back inside, you know, the Serbs are running down the streets, massacring anybody who's not a Serb in the streets of Belgrade today. Go outside again, hear kids laughing and jumping rope and playing basketball, soccer. No, we lived up on a hill. No, no gunfire. No, that was a backfire. No, no screaming nothing come back inside cnn's spewing the same rhetoric 
you know, and I would see 95 plus percent of everything the media reported was a lie. And now I'm supposed to believe the rhetoric on Russia and Ukraine. How come nobody is asking Russia's perspective of things? What did Ukraine do? What did Biden and the quid, quid pro quo that he did against Ukraine to get this puppet wing piano playing president into power who, you know, t that replaced the president that was fighting corruption, including Biden's own son, Hunter, being on the board of directors of the Ukraine Power Company. What about all the bioweapons labs that we had in the Ukraine? What else was going on there? What about territory that Ukraine was trying to claim as theirs that has, you know, Russia's uh, fuel, you know, petroleum supplies and whatnot? So what is the other narrative that we're not hearing that they refuse to tell us about this evil Hitler-like Putin? You know, you know, back then it was Milosevic Hitler. Uh, you know, last week it was Trump Hitler. You know, anybody who disagrees with their narrative, they associate to Hitler. That's their ad hominem appeal to the stupid masses to believe whatever we're saying. And the stupid masses go, oh, oh. Putin like Hitler, we got to get him out. We don't need to hear the whole story. We don't need any, you know, primary sources. The fake news media told me, and I'm going to believe it. The fake news media told me to wear a mask for two years, and I did it for the greater good. I want to protect my neighbors. I'm going to, you know, never mind your spreading disease with your, your dirty mask. I'm going to get lollipop because, you know, for the greater good, never mind that I had three family members in the last month and a half all get joy who are double and triple lollipop the ones who haven't gotten it refuse the lollipop a lot of that going around you yeah, know another but, thing i wanted to bring up about this is like uh they were like pushing the worrying about the older people right yeah, But what people didn't understand is behind the scenes, and I know this because I was in long-term care facilities and hospitals, um, people were scared to go to work, and as a result, a shit ton of people died of neglect. A shit ton. <laughs> yeah, people were dying because no one would go to work because they were scared to go to work because the news was telling them to be scared to go to work, and so they were listening to that, and they weren't showing up to look after your grandma or your mother, or whatever it was yeah. that was in those places, you and know, that's why they died, not because they got joy. The quickest way to end the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, the quickest way to have ended the joy. Uh, beep, 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 beep. was to turn off the TV, and is. You know, if you don't have the critical thinking skills to realize that a contradiction is always a lie or an error, that there are no contradictions in nature because reality is real and they I think we lost you there. You might have to do one of these. We'll see if he comes nature back. Nature can't have contradictions. Once you realize always and without exception. What? Okay, you back? We're back. We're back. Yeah. All right. So once you realize that there are no contradictions in nature and a contradiction is always and without exception a lie or an error because God cannot lie, then you realize a contradiction signals you where to look. You know, and there's a process to critical thinking. It's not, I believe whatever the TV says, the TV does my thinking for me so I don't have to do the research. I've had people actually tell me that. You know, they 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 go through all the sources so I don't have to. And that's why they're all in unison with what they say. Really? It's not because anybody who has a dissenting opinion is censored out, maybe? It's not because they're telling you an official narrative. You know, what you know, here's the it's a basic process and you know it. It's called the trivium method. Who, what, where and when those are the first four questions you ask under any investigation under any topic 
That's your general grammar for your knowledge. After you have who, what, where, and when, then you can ask why. And why is your understanding or your logic. And in why, you remove any contradictions because logic is the art of non-contradictory identification. You remove any contradictions and then you have understanding of the who, what, where, and when, and why by removing the, fla the fallacies and the contradictions so you can explain how you arrived at your conclusion, your rhetoric, your wisdom. That's how you get wisdom. You don't get wisdom by parroting whatever the TV says and second, third, fourth-hand sources. You go to the primary. Who said it? Where did they say it? When did they say it? You know, uh, why did they say it, et cetera. And you go through, you know, and if it takes you a week or a month or a year to investigate it, well, then you know the truth. You can either spend a week or a month or a year or sometimes 10 minutes investigating the primary sources on your own to know the truth for, for real in reality, or you can spend a lifetime believing lies. And most people will actually believe that believing lies for a lifetime is easier. Probably, and I'm just picking a number, 85% of what most people believe is false. And so how do you go through the inventory of your mind and bring that number way down so that maybe it's only five or 10% of what you believe is false? Who, what, where, when, why, how? You know, knowledge, understanding, wisdom. Not, well, I heard it on the TV and they're not going to lie to me and they're doing my thinking for me and going through all the source for me so I don't have to. No, that's lazy. That's being a fool. That's, that's not having a, the confidence in your own thinking capacity to verify things on your own, and that's giving your thinking over to someone else to do your thinking for you. And that's never a good thing because throughout history, whenever we give our thinking over to someone else, it turns out badly. Joy. Over the last two years is an example. Russia, Ukraine is an example. You know, uh, the Hillary Biden, you know, Obama fiasco. You know, I mean, it's like, it's just proved two weeks ago, three weeks ago, that Hillary was behind that whole thing, and suddenly it's buried. Is that a coincidence? I don't think so. You know, and you know, and they've been say calling us conspiracy theorists for three years because we all said it was Hil Hillary. Well, when you look at the facts, it's obvious. When re you remove the contradictions, it's obvious. <laughs> When you understand logical fallacies and how they literally blame their opponent for everything you, they are doing, it becomes obvious. They invert everything. They spin it. So you spin it back, remove the contradictions, remove the logical fallacies, and then you can see the truth. And why do they want you to believe the truth doesn't exist? So that you don't have the confidence in yourself to ever go out and look for truth. And hey, well... Let's go so far as to say reality isn't real. It's all a quantum delusion and you can't know anything. Opinions are like a-holes. Everybody has one. Now, if there is a contradiction, that tells you where to dig. It's that simple. And, you know, people should memorize the, you know, at least 20 to 30 most common logical fallacies, you know, and I have a, a, a second website, triviumeducation.com. I even sell bookmarks with them on it. Hold it up in your pocket, carry it around. Oh, you know, there's like 19 or 22 fallacies on. Oh, that was the, this fallacy, you know. And once you can start seeing the fallacies, you can know when someone lied to you and the exact lie they used. Instead, you know, and a lot of people, their intuition will go off. They'll get that implicit, funny feeling in their stomach. That was something's not right, but I'm not sure what it is. Well, when you memorize the logical fallacies, it goes from implicit over to explicit knowledge. And you go, oh, they just used this exact lie on me. Now you have like a mental jujitsu or a mental antivirus 
way to defend yourself from these types trying to manipulate you, you know? And just going so, through my head, how much like a martial art it is when you said mental jujitsu, I was kind of just thinking people need to understand that something like trivium is something that you adopt and it's something that you practice almost ritualistically on and you apply it to everything. Right. So it becomes your default setting, right? It becomes right. what you're well, and it, it, you know, when you start off with it, it's like a toddler learning to walk and you're all over the place and you're fumbling and falling down and, you know, damn, uh, and then, you know, after a while, it becomes so natural. You don't even realize you're doing it. anymore. You know, you're just, you know, did I fact check that when somebody asked me my opinion on something? It's like, did I ask who, what, where, when, why, or how? Nope. Why don't you do it? And then you can come back to me with what you find, you know? I, don't rely on me. Don't trust my secondhand opinion on this. Go to the sources yourself. Have confidence in yourself to do this on your own. That's the whole point of learning this. And then evil people will see the trivium and go, ho, 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 and they'll invert it too. And then they'll use that and they'll, you know, they'll spin it so that they're using contradictions and fallacies against their target. My third name for this podcast is Alexandria 2.0. I love the, I'm fascinated with the whole burning of Alexandria thing, just because I understand how history gets written and rewritten and used to control people's opinions on things. Well, and, I'm not uh, even sure anymore if the whole, you know, burning of the libraries at Alexandria narrative is true either, you know? Well, yeah, it's, I think that's a, a glorified version to, because I mean, book burnings happen everywhere, right? Well, they, like, well, they, they, they always want to spin things on the Christians. You know, it's like the Salem thing was actually, you know, in my own investigation, I discovered that that was uh, human inoculation experiments being done by Harvard and Cotton Mather, who headed the trials and uh, all of these guys. And they covered it up in the witchcraft thing and created a spell against Christianity that the Puritans weren't even Christians. They worshiped the first five books of the Old Testament. Well, for anybody with half a brain, you know Christianity starts at the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, then Acts. That's where Christianity starts. That's way at the back of the Bible. That's the last 410 pages. That's not the first, you know, five books of the Old Testament. So, you know, and all, it was all spun against these superstitious Christians. When you go in and you read the documents from the late 1600s of these people, they were far smarter and more intelligent and clearly knew the trivium and critical thinking than people today. Like you can heart, they're so advanced. Most of the letters that I read <clears throat> in their thinking, you can hardly even understand them today. We're so dumbed down. Well, that was part of the part of the reason why all these book burnings and everything did happen, right? Was to keep us away from information sources, right? That uh, would have benefited us today, but we haven't had them for too many generations. And look at where well, it's got us. I think there is something to the whole Tartary thing, and I found a veil that became really hard to pierce through between 720 to 1690 and beyond. And trying to get anything beyond that period is really difficult. There's a, a lot of fake history written, you know, and Tartary was a massive, nearly global Christian empire that stretched from England to Alaska, from Siberia to China, down into Africa, India, and it's totally erased off the map. We're told the Great Wall of China. That wasn't the Great Wall of China. It was the Great Wall of Tartary. They built that to keep the Chinese out. The communist Chinese changed the entrances from the north side to the south side to make it look like they built it. It was built to keep them out. You know, but, you know, and then you'll even see, you know, uh, hit pieces drawn up. Oh, these, these conspiracy theorists believe this nation Tartary existed. I have sharia law text talking about you know, the muslims bragging that they destroyed it i have 200 year old books that openly discuss tartary i have dictionaries and encyclopedias that discuss tartary you know and uh the whole history of it was erased what about genghis khan afghanistan 
you know, most people don't know that Genghis Khan was a Christian. That's all been spun that he was some Buddhist or Hindu or, or whatever the heck. Uh, and I'm going to pull up my database here real quick, just so I give the proper names here. But, you know, Genghis Khan, his father, his grandson, his mother, were all Christians. Why is that covered up? You know, in fact, he used to be able to put their names in Google. And uh, hold on a second. It's funny, so, I actually didn't know that you had so pointed Genghis that. Khan, Sorry, go ahead. Genghis Khan's name means King of Kings. His father was Yasugi Bagatur, and excuse my pronunciation, which meant Hero of Jesus. And uh, Yesu Monkey Khan, who was the grandson, I think the grandson of Genghis Khan, that means Jesus is eternal or Jesus forever. So why is all of this history a race? And we're told like, oh, Marco Polo, you know, brought Christianity over there and blah, blah, blah. No, they were, they were already Christians. Afghanistan was a Christian nation. The Muslims conquered it. Afghanistan. It's in the name, folks. You know, so there is there is a, a veil, and and every couple hundred years they use the the witches brew to wipe out a good chunk of the population. You know, which I exposed in the in the Salem work. Uh, which became the inoculations, which became the vaccinations, et cetera. You know, rather than poisoning the well, there's one of those fallacies. Where did that fallacy come from? Huh, poison the well. You mean to wipe out a whole group of people and all their animals? Poison the well. Oh, that means in fallacy terms, oh, you say one thing wrong. Therefore, everything Shane says is wrong. Why would they name that poisoning the well? And then when you look at the history of this stuff, they, they realize that they could get people to want to take the witch's brew rather than poison the well. Hey, line up at your local Walgreens and we'll just shoot it right up into your arm. You know, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Germany... German insurance companies reported they came out exposing that over 36,000 people had died from the, and the government was claiming like two and a half thousand because the insurance companies are getting hit by all of this. So they're finally coming out and exposing, you know, because they're getting all the death claims and they're looking at all the stats going, something isn't right here. I posted on Facebook, you know, how many views and tra how much traction it got? Zero. Well, I mean, if you had a bigger bum and some boobs, it could have gotten a lot, right? Or, I mean, if you put a... Yeah, you put well, a, I need long blonde hair, blue off. eyes, yeah. nice puffy lips and some double Ds and I can get it going, you know? Oh, yeah. And uh, when you were talking earlier, I think about the, the family unit, I, I started to think about CRISPR technology and, and various types of technology that are kind of coming along right now that are pushing us even further away from it. And I do see the agenda that we talked about and everything as, you know, kind of leading towards this time where they now have basically a new God to present the, uh, the public with in the forms of technology yeah. uh, and pushing us towards basically what seems like, you know, transhumanism as it. As oh, yeah. Well, who created who created the word transhumanism? I have no idea. Julian Huxley. <laughs> see. When you start researching stuff, and I'm saying this to your audience, whenever you come across a Huxley name, it means it's a hot, stinking pile of shit. Who promoted Darwin? Thomas Henry Huxley. Who promoted MKUltra and the whole New Age and all the psychedelics? Aldous Huxley. Who promoted all the eugenics and all the stuff out of Princeton? Julian Huxley. Whenever you, you know, built down hoax, Julian Huxley, you can go on down the list, transhumanism, Julian Huxley. 
all of this stuff eventually leads back to a Huxley and you can go up the chain and, and follow it to their cohorts in the Fabian Society and the Frankfurt School and Westcott and Hort and Blavatsky and Annie Besant and the UN under the Lucifer Trust, which became the Lucius Trust to cover up the name. And you can see the world government that they're trying to promote through the UN based on Satanism and why they have to get rid of Christianity because it, it encourages family and nationality. You want to protect your own first rather than caring about people on the other side of the globe who want to kill you. you know, and then they want to cover up that Islam is required to kill all non-believers or subjugate them. You have to pay the, the jizya tax or the capitation tax if you're a Christian or Jew, and if you don't pay it, you're decapitated. <clears throat> you know, the only way that you can survive not paying the tax or being killed in Islam is by becoming a Muslim. So, you know, they want you to think that the Muslims are the victims. Oh, and, and you know, what about all the fake history about the Christian crusades against those poor Islamic victims? Well, Islam did over 500 invasions into Europe, taking millions of slaves and killing many millions of others. And after more than 500 invasions, King Jan of Poland united Europe's armies and drove the Muslims out. All of that history is forgotten. Now they want to pretend that the Muslims are the poor victims. Look, you know, the Muslims bombed Notre Dame last year, all this kind of stuff, what was a year and a half ago. Muslims are required to do all of this stuff, you know. But, you know, they don't want you to know the real history. A Muslim is required to lie to non-believers, and they're not supposed to have friends that are non-believers unless it's part of their jihad. So they can pretend they're your friend, but they're not your friend. And any Muslim that you really get along with is actually an apostate, and he'll be killed along with you. So all of this stuff is covered up, you know. But, it, it, you know, I'll hear these people, oh, what about poor Islam? How can you say all that negative stuff about Islam? I'm quoting their own texts. Have you ever read their own texts? Have you ever gone to their primary sources, their tasfir, their Sharia law, their... Quran, their hadiths, and, and read through them. How they, you know, in Sharia law, there's like 200 pages just on slavery and treatment of your slaves. How Muhammad, his youngest wife, Aisha, was six years old and he consummated the marriage when she was nine. How they owned dozens of slaves. How he was a mass murderer. No, you're not allowed to talk about any of that. You're only allowed to talk about whatever bad the Jews do. Which there's plenty to go in in there too about, you know, it's revealed in the book of Esther and and uh, the story of Haman is actually a cover-up for the story of Jesus from the Jewish perspective. There's 13 exact coincidences between the story of Esther or between the story of Haman and the book of Esther and the story of Jesus. So the book of Esther is actually the fifth gospel from the Jewish perspective. It's not 400 BC or 200 BC or whatever nonsense. The oldest copy we have is from Josephus, who probably wrote it. But why are there exact consequences? Why, why are Christians blamed for the Holocaust when the book of Esther exposes that Jews committed a Holocaust against Christians and buried it in the story of Haman. And there's other issues that come up there too. But not only that, the Nazi party, the National Socialist German Workers Party, National Socialist German Workers Party, Socialist Socialist, was founded by the Thule Society by Baron von Sabatendorf, a Muslim. So why are the Christians getting the blame for that? And why did they fake the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Codex Sinaiticus and all of this other stuff to attack Christianity and bring about Vatican II to water down Christianity? 
when it wasn't even the Christians. Same thing with Salem. You know, it, Salem, Massachusetts is now a Disneyland of, of Satanism and anti-Christian bullcrap. And they lead you through one museum uh, through another that has total lies about Salem to tell. You know, I have over six feet of books on Salem in the other room, and including the actual court record. All of the books are completely full of crap. You start applying the trivium to it, you know, well, you know, they were just superstitious Christians. Okay, well, let's go look and see what actually happened. Who were the players? Who, what, where, when, why? right? Then we can explain how we got to the conclusion. You know, but nobody wants to do this. Oh, you know, the girls, you know, it was just reported that they went crazy. Let's say we go into the court records, which are still readily available, published, and we read what the girls had to say about their own symptoms and the reports from the parents of the girls and take those at face value and say, now, what causes those symptoms? Oh, well, you know, it was just ergot because the people back then, they were too stupid to know about ergot. No, actually, they knew very well about ergot. And it's written all about at that time. And when you look at the symptoms of ergot, there's only a couple of the checkboxes that line up with what the symptoms of the girls said. Well, I, yes. created, I created a checklist of all the girls' symptoms right out of the court records. And then I went through and looked at syphilis and ergot poisoning, which for those of you who don't know, that's what LSD is made out of, you know, and, and this ergot bullshit is the most common one that they promote today. And then uh, mercury and all these other different things went through all the symptoms, lined them up. The only ones that checked out were mercury and cinnabar. Well, they were doing human inoculation experiments with mercury and cinnabar. Why in 1999 were there 17 bodies found in Ben Franklin's basement? Why were Ben Franklin, why was Ben Franklin's mentor, Cotton Mather, whose grandfather founded Harvard, Cotton Mather headed the Salem Witch Trials? Why were there 17 bodies found in Ben Franklin's basement? And of course, if you read on the Smithsonian Institute website, they, they have some weird spin story about it. It's clearly spin for anybody using critical thinking. But somebody will read that, oh, oh well, you know, well, it was just at the time, you know, and, and, you know, it was just kind of some weird circumstances, you know, and the bodies just kind of popped in his basement. <laughs> well, so you know, it's like, well, or he was a sick psychopath doing human experimentation. His brother, James Franklin, was, um, was the founding member of the American Hellfire Club. For those of you who, who may want to understand what the Hellfire Club was, read Oscar Wilde's uh, Pictures of Dorian Gray or watch the movie. That'll give you a clear picture. James Franklin is who made the term yellow journalism famous. That's what we call fake news today. And who, who published the pro-inoculation pamphlets for, for Ben and Cotton? James. So the same guy who popularized 300 years ago the term yellow journalism that is still in regular use today. That's what we're looking at. The guy who was an open Satanist and what were they all being accused of? You know, we found so much actual Satanism back then, but you have to understand what Satanism and witchcraft actually are. You know, and people just think, oh, well, you know, it's just superstition or whatever. No, there was actually that kind of stuff going on. You know, but it wasn't just stupid, superstitious Christians. And no, the people at the time weren't stupid. They were more intelligent than we are today. You know, these are people that, went across the ocean, established a society and community, defended it, built their own homes, built their own farms, built their own communities, their own travel systems, everything. And people who work in cubicles behind a keyboard think that they were stupid. Yeah, primitive. Our primitive ancestors, right? We primitive history has been 
superstitious ancestors. And never yeah. mind that Salem was like the city of London today. Salem back then was a country unto itself. It was the richest city in the United States. And the whole story <laughs> about the Underground Railroads and freeing the slaves and the slaves feeling the moss on the north side of the trees as they escaped, total nonsense. There's actual underground railroads running from South Carolina all the way to Maine and Canada. Underground railroads that were pulled by mules and whatnot. They originally built by these stupid morons to get around the tariffs of the British so that they could move goods around without the British ever knowing about it. So they created a whole network of underground, actual underground railroads. Not Moss on trees, underground railroads. We don't want to take it that literally, right? Because school teaches us not to. Why do they call it the underground? Well, because they ran north and they felt the moth on the trees. I mean, it's <laughs> like, come on. If you actually go there, you can actually take tours of the entrances of these underground rail railroads. Most of them have been buried and covered up, but you can still get down into a lot of them. Well, I, before I let you go, um, <laughs> with the world gone as crazy as it has and everything you've been uh, trying to warn people that they were walking into uh, is now just their everyday reality, what's uh, the best advice you can give them on how to deal with it? One, study the Trivium method. Go to triviumeducation.com, download Leonard Peikoff's Introduction to Logic series first and go through that. It's under the study materials page. Study everything you can on the Trivium. Study everything you can in the New Testament and it lays it all out. Um, and you'll be able to see it for what it is, lies and inversion. And, uh, you know, learn to have confidence in yourself to find truth and to understand that truth does exist and that we're not in this delusional moral relativist quantum uh you know spin out hole whatever you want to call it but uh you know i appreciate you taking the time to uh have me on and uh, ask your listeners to support my work and the show, logosmedia.com, L-O-G-O-S media.com. And please donate, support all you can. Appreciate all the help I can get. And uh, so that's pretty much that, I guess. Let's get the man a new computer so he can get back to work. He just, uh, just had a dinosaur die on him. So. Yeah, well, nine-year-old computer, I just dropped, uh, what, about 12, close to 1200 bucks yesterday getting the new parts, so I got to make up for that. Um, you know, it's, uh, yeah. the, the, the computer is nine years old that I've been doing the show on it. I, I managed to get it back. Bit of a freezing here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we have lost Jan. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to do, do a proper goodbye, but hopefully everybody enjoyed the podcast. This was great. I will uh, thank Jan for everything he has done. What I want you guys to know is um, I'm a very big fan of the way that this man looks after his work because he's constantly going back to it. He's constantly updating it. He's very humble when he finds that he's incorrect about things and so i hope you guys will check it out and check out his work and take care of you for us talk to you all later <laughs>